All right, y'all. This is going to seem a little sales pitchy at first, but hang in with me. Do you have a 73 through 79 Ford truck? Is your instrument cluster falling apart, disintegrating? Does it feel like it's falling to dust right before your eyes? Have you patched it, hot glued it to no avail? Does it want to do this just by breathing on it? Well, this is the video for you. Check it out. Hello everyone, uh, this video pertains to 1973 to 1979 Ford F-Series trucks. Um, this is for an instrument cluster swap or if you have what's known as cluster rot or your instrument cluster is disintegrating, then this would be for you. I am going to cut to the chase and warn everyone that this uh, mainly pertains to 1975 through 1979 trucks, but I'll also be testing gauges and changing all of my bulbs to LED. So if you're interested in either of those, you'll want to fast forward to that part. So last summer, I bought a 1976 F-250 Super Cab, and I noticed that some of my dash lights weren't working. So pulling the dash was pretty easy. Um, there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there. If you're interested in seeing that, you can watch those. Um, but when I pulled my instrument cluster, I couldn't help but notice that on the back side, the cluster material was falling apart right before my eyes. I took a hot glue gun and I, I fixed it as I could. Um, there were more spots behind this uh, printed circuit that I also hot glued, but there were a whole bunch of spots that I glued and as a uh, result of, of this cluster rot, a lot of my, my dash bulbs are loose or they just wouldn't stay in. Like, this uh, high, low, high beam indicator, I had to completely rebuild in order for it to stay in. But I still have a, a few of them that are, that are pretty loose, like, like this one here. I mean, that's, that's tight, but I can still move it all over the place. That's not good contact, and it, and it probably won't illuminate correctly. So, knowing this, I, I repaired it the best I could and decided that I would try to find a replacement down the road. Well, fast forward to last week, I go to our local junkyard and I find this. I was pretty excited. Um, the cluster was in, in pretty good shape, as you can see, no cracks or anything. But I put my two clusters side by side and, and noticed, noticed a difference. Mine has gauges. And this one has warning lights, an oil warning light and an alternator warning light. These two clusters are not compatible. You cannot plug my harness into this cluster or vice versa. So that deemed this one immediately no good to me. Um, so I'll do my best to resell it and get my money back. Um, but just be warned that the printed circuit, the the housing and the internal components are not compatible with with the gauge cluster um, so you can still do everything that I'm about to describe but just know that you're looking for something that has lights not gauges or vice versa keep that in mind so I did a little internet research and a few people, not a lot of people, said to look for a 90s van cluster. So that's what I did. And lo and behold, here's what I found. I'm, I'm, I'm using my best guess because I don't know the vans as well as I know the trucks. But this cluster, I believe, is from a late 80s, like an 89 or a 90 or a 91 van. Um... 
this has the gauges just like mine. They did make them with warning lights. So if your cluster is falling apart, make sure you find one with lights. But this one has the gauges just like mine. Um, they changed the cluster back material. If you put them side by side and look at them, mine isn't very crisp and clear around the edges. Um, you can see where it's starting to chip in some spots. You can tell that this is a completely different material and it also has a different part number. Um, for comparison purposes, here's the part numbers for my housing and here's the part numbers for this housing. Now on this card I have 73 to 79. It is only 75 to 79. Um, anyhow, the housings, they have the same main part number, but a different prefix. So D5 means 1975, and this E1 means 1981. Um, and that's when they upgraded the plastic material, which is the different prefix. But the circuit is exactly the same. So I can leave this circuit on here. I know all of my dash, um, the gauges work. Uh, so I'll just swap my gauges over and use most of this material. Uh, that's my plan. Now, when I got all of these, I started to wonder, was this the right, the right piece for me? What's the differences? What do I have to look out for? Um, so I started to do some internet research, knowing what I had, and here's what I discovered. If you've ever been on Ford Truck Enthusiast forums, you'll know of Number Dummy. Uh, he's Bill, a retired Ford, Ford Parts Manager. These are some quotes for him. Now, this D5TF is my uh, instrument cluster housing. It's the cluster that fell apart, 75 through 79, F100 through F350s, 75 to 80 Econolines, and 78, 79 trucks and Broncos. It is not the same cluster as 73 and 74. If you have a 73 or 74, the cluster does not disintegrate. You'll, you'll probably be good for a long time. Um, the D5TZ 108AB is the one that crumbles to dust. There was a replacement made E1PZ, which is the same as this, uh, hard plastic that does not turn to dust. Um, the numbers differ because this is an ID number, not a part number. After 1956, numbers found on parts are casting or ID numbers, so keep that in mind. So basically, this UF is the same as the PZ. So keep that in mind when you're searching for part numbers. Now knowing this is the same part number as this van cluster that I have. So knowing that, I searched this part number online and found that you can still buy it today um, through Dennis Carpenter, Jeff Bronco Graveyard, and others for around $65. So instead of going online and buying one for $65, I found one at a junkyard for 20 bucks. So this is the Ford replacement for the original 75 to 79 clusters. So rather than pay $65, you can probably get one cheaper at your local junkyard. So as I stated before, I'm gonna tear this one apart, um, mark any differences that I see along the way, but I'm still going to use all of my gauges because they're pretty bright and they're in good condition and I know they all work. Um, right off the get-go, the differences that I notice, um, this one has an unleaded gas only. Um, that's because these van clusters were also offered in a diesel option. Uh, so if you did a diesel swap, you might want to look for one of these with a diesel um, only. That'd be kind of cool. Um, other than that, 
I believe most things are interchangeable. It still has the seatbelt light, a brake light. I mean, really, if you wanted to, you could just plug in this van cluster and you'd be good to go. Um, other than that, the only other difference that I noted was the tabs that hold the light bulbs in, like so. I already upgraded to LED, but I'm gonna do it again and show you how the polarity works and all that later. Um, these are different. They look like they're a better style. They look like they hold better, they're tighter. Um, so I do think I am still gonna use those. But I'm gonna start tearing these apart. And uh, if I note any differences, um, I'll show you what I'm doing along the way. But I'm gonna start by taking um, the lens and uh, basically I'm gonna remove one, two, three, and uh, go from there. So I'll show you guys what's going on. Before I tear these apart, one other side note. Um, I did post a question about gauges on uh, the Facebook sites and someone told me that if I had a 1976, my speedometer should be a 100 mile an hour speedometer not an 85 per mile an hour speedometer. Um, that immediately made me look at the Econoline gauge and I saw that it actually had increments of five, not increments of 10, like the 70s F series did. So I did some research on the forums online. Uh, from what I understand, whether you have an 80 gauge, or I'm sorry, an 85 gauge, or a 100 gauge, they will both work correctly. And so if you wanted to find a 100 mile an hour gauge and put it in your cluster, you could totally do that and it would work fine. Um, but I wasn't sure if my truck was still original or not, or, or if they were correct. So I found, here's the part number um, from the master part number book, uh, Ford's book. Basically it says, that 73 to 70 73 to 74 f100 through f250 had a I, I looked up this part number it it was a 100 mile an hour that had no high beam jewel now when they're talking about the high beam jewel they're talking about that guy right there so the 73 and 74 did not have that jewel however the 7374 F350 did. Um, and then 75-77, which is what mine is, had a high beam jewel 100 mile an hour. So mine should have had a 100 mile an hour um, speedometer, but since I have this 85 speedometer and it works just fine, Plus, I'll never probably be going over 85 miles an hour. This is going to suit me just fine. But know that you could always look for this high beam jewel 100 mile an hour and swap it out. All right. Well, I have the clusters separated. Um, they look pretty much identical. Um, the cluster faces... I was able to get the 76 cluster uh, separated with your standard um, open-ended screwdriver, um, which I believe is a quarter inch. I'm not sure, but standard open-ended uh, screwdriver. Got these three. However, the three on the Econoline cluster um, took a five and a half millimeter. Um, so rather than try to remember which ones go with which, I stuck them back in. Um, that way I don't have to remember. They look like they're built almost exactly the same as far as how everything is put in. So I'll probably stick with the original one, um, just for originality purposes. Uh, now, comparing the gauges, 
the part number on the speedometers are different, um, obviously because the 85 uh, and 5 hour, 5 mile an hour uh, designation. Um, like I said, my gauges, as you can see, are in pretty good shape. They're still pretty bright. I'm going to use those. Um, the oil pressure and uh, voltage gauge are the exact same part number as these. Uh, so this whole gauge will probably be a good one to hold on to uh, just for spare parts and spare gauges. Uh, this one still has the incandescent bulbs in it. I'll be going with the LED bulbs. Um, I'm sure I'll have the polarity wrong on some of them. I'll show you how to fix them later. Uh, I'm going to start tearing these two apart and uh, uh, show you guys how to test some gauges. So I'm going to start taking all of the uh, gauges out of these from the back. Uh, and then we'll go from there. I have all the bulbs out and I'm looking at the printed circuit. Uh, please, before you start getting in all, into all of this, um, just verify that the circuit you're going to be using and the circuit that you have are the same part number. Um, or, or at least visually check and make sure that everything's going to the same place. Um, because if you don't, yours won't work properly. Make sure your high beam light is in the same location. Um, I know on the 73 and 74s, they were on a side rather than up top. Um, so if you're switching over to this for some reason, I believe the pins are the same as 73 and 74. Um, but, but just making sure what you have is compatible. Now these plastic clips, they do pry off. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fighting it and trying not to damage this printed circuit, but they do, they do pull and or pry off. Um, same as all of these gauge nuts. Um, it looks like they will come off with a uh, 5 16 deep well. Um, I'm going to keep chugging along. Uh, go figure, I hit a snag with one of the studs on one of the Econoline gauges. It's, it's just spinning. Um, so I'm going to see if I can't hold the threads with a pair of ice grips. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to take the speedometer out. Um, all of these were 5 sixteenths. Um, all of these speedometer bolts are going to be a quarter deep. So uh, keep that in mind. All right. Now, like I said, I know all my gauges are good. Um, so I'll be reusing those. I got all the gauges out of the Econoline um, cluster. Now, gauge testing. What I have is a little jumper here. It's, it's just um, two wires with alligator clips on one end um, and one on the other, but that's beside the point. You, uh, you don't even have to have clips. Just attach the wires to the, to the studs on the back and with a AA battery, um, attach them to the other end and when you put everything together, I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Uh, when you put everything together, the needle should slowly start to climb. If it does, your gauge is good. If it doesn't, you could be on the wrong end of the battery, and all you have to do is switch your positive and negative ends. Um, but if it moves like so, uh, chances are your gauge is good, and you can either use it or save it for later. Alright, so I got all my gauges um, out of my old cluster, and have them ready to go in my Econoline backing. Um, I took the Econoline um, printed circuit board off, and... I used this contact cleaner with some Q-tips and just went over all of the copper connections on this and uh, they were pretty dirty um, so that's what I did and then um, before I put this back on here I will use some contact cleaner or uh, contact compound 
just to prevent corrosion. Hopefully my bulbs will stay lit longer, etc, etc. Um, the only thing holding this circuit board onto this backing is this screw here. Uh, it goes through that hole that holds it down. Um, these pins here are a tight fit onto these holes here. Um, but those are really the only things that hold it on other than the, the gauges. So um, I'll start reassembling this uh, by putting this circuit board on first um, and apply that compound to all necessary connections along the way. I'll keep you posted. I got uh, another easy step done. I have all my gauges in. I used that um, that lubricant or that um, compound, as you can see, a little bit of you can see some hanging out the sides there, but it's on there. That should uh, prevent corrosion. Um, not that my old one was really bad, um, but some of these were kind of falling apart and I figured it couldn't hurt. But my next step is to put the speedometer in. Um, one of the differences I noticed between mine and the Econoline was the high beam indicator on mine is just a plain blue light, where the um, high beam had a little high beam uh, icon on the speedometer on that. So if that's something you wanted, I'm, I'm sure you could probably swap those. But uh, as I said earlier, I'm a sucker for originality, so I want it to appear original, so I'll be using this. But I'm going to get that installed. Um, and then I believe I can start putting my bulbs back in. All the gauges are installed. Um, I tried cleaning them up the best I could. I ended up bending this needle a little bit, so I'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, I also tried cleaning this up the best I could, but the white on the lettering is actually coming off a little bit. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there. Um, from the driver's seat, it'll look fine. Uh, I'm going to start putting all my bulbs back in. The original style, as I pointed out earlier, um, I'm sorry, was this here, uh, the older style. I already switched to LEDs, but I'm actually going to use uh, the ones that were in the Econoline. They look a little nicer. Uh, so I'm going to swap my LED bulbs to these and use them. A lot of people take these blue these blue things off. Uh, they're just covers. They make the illumination white instead of, I'm sorry, taking them off makes the illumination white instead of these blue. Um, as I said, I'm a sucker for originality, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave those blue covers on. But uh, I'm gonna put my LED bulbs in now. I got all the bulbs installed. Um, now with LED, um, it matters which direction they go in. I won't be able to test that until I put the cluster in the truck and turn the lights on. Um, we'll get to there in just a little bit, but I'm basically to the point now where I can put the faceplate on. Um, again, for originality's sake, I'm going to go with this one again. Uh, however, I am going to use some window cleaner. Uh, I'm going to take this off, use some window cleaner, clean this up. I'm also going to show you a little trick to revive this uh, black back here. Um, it's held on by these pins. Uh, you basically use a small pair of pliers or something, squeeze them together, and they come right out. So I'm going to disassemble these real quick. Okay, so I got that apart. Um, I gave this thing a quick water bath. It, it has a couple cracks, like right there. And there's another one right here. Um, but it's the only one I have of this style, so I'll be using it. it it's what was on my truck. Um, but the best way 
uh, to make this thing shine and look like new again and keep it shining for quite some time is to find some type of oil, um, whether it's like uh, vegetable oil, canola oil, um, whatever. Uh, I think I'm going to use WD-40 this time. I used Pam last time because it's what I could find. But this keeps it shiny. Um, it'll keep it shiny for quite a while. Uh, all you do is you spray it on liberally uh, so it's all coated and nice and shiny. Gets to every area you can see. Um, if you want to, you can let it sit for a little while. Let it really soak it in. Um, but you kind of just blot it off and uh, call it a day. I'll blot it off, reassemble. I'll put this back on, this face back on uh, with the lens that I cleaned up with some glass cleaner. And uh, I'll be ready to put it in the truck and test it out. So let's do it to it. All right, everybody, here is my finished product. I have the Econoline housing, the Econoline bulb um, placement holders, um, the Econoline printed circuit board. I have the 76 speedometer uh, face plate and gauges. Um, I'm pretty much done here. I'm ready to take it out to the truck and test it out and uh, see how everything goes. Let's check it out. Just a quick word of advice. Uh, since you're not in here and you probably won't be able to do it often, the speedometer cable was originally lubricated from the factory with white lithium grease. Um, so while you're in here, you might want to spray some in there, lubricate that cable up uh, so it doesn't bind up and you won't have to replace it as quickly. Okay, I have the cluster in. Um, the harness is plugged into the back. Let's pull the lights. My cluster lights come on. They actually look pretty good. Um, let's check high beam. My high beam light isn't working. Um, turn signal. My key has to be on. I hear it. I don't see it on the dash. The other light, I hear it, but it's not lit on the dash. So I'm going to take the, these those three bulbs out and show you what you got to do. Okay, my three bulbs that weren't working are these, this one, this one, and this one. All I should have to do is take them out and rotate them 90 degrees so that the top contact is now on the bottom and the bottom contact is now on the top. Okay, last test. Then I'll know everything that I have to replace or what needs done and how it looks. Dash lights come on good. Um, I have a I have a bad ground on one of my bulb sockets, so that comes on when the bulb is installed correctly. The turn signal works as it should. Awesome. This turn signal. Um, I hear it. Oh, there it is. Huh. Looks like I might have a connectivity issue. But it works, and high beam. Aha, awesome. Okay, so there's your speedometer update, uh, swap, whatever you want to call it, for primarily 75 to 79 Ford trucks. As always, I'll post links to my favorite Facebook groups and Instagram accounts. And I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you guys later.